Well, let's get started. Um, I want to give you an example of a negative binomial distribution. So in this example, we're going to toss a coin until we obtain exactly four heads. And that, the fact that we're obtaining exactly four heads is very important because what is random is the number of trials until we obtain exactly four heads. And I should add, I'll add that word for emphasis here. Uh, so exactly, four, exactly four heads. Okay. And so now on the next page, I'm going to show you the events in the sample space that correspond to this. So when we write this out, um, I have x and I have the event in the sample space. So my random variable is the number of trials until we obtain exactly four heads. The smallest value that x can be is four, and that is that every single, every single trial results in a head, all four of them. So the first, the second, the third, and the fourth are all heads. If x is five, that means there were five tosses of the coin and four out of five of them landed on heads, okay? Now, here we have the event in the sample space and we can see that for x equals 5, there are four outcomes that correspond to this, okay? So we have our four outcomes. Those are the number of events in the sample space. Uh, then when we go down to x equals 6, we're going to see that... Um, the number of events that correspond, sorry, keep erasing rather than, um, than moving, okay? We see that the number of events that correspond to x equals six tosses of the coin are going to be, here's one, here's two, here's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's going to be 10 outcomes that correspond to x equals 6. Well, let's figure out how to compute the probability of x equals 6, and maybe that will lead some insight into how the negative binomial distribution is working. So one thing that I want to emphasize is that the last outcome everywhere, on every single outcome, is going to be a heads. Now, you might say, well, why couldn't I have this outcome? Um, tails, heads, 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 heads. And that is going to be five trials, but then I'm going to throw on another tails. If this was our outcome right here, we wouldn't have that sixth outcome. Okay, This would correspond to the event right here. And we won't have our sixth trial. So we always end on a heads, always end on the criteria in X. Okay. So this is a lot like the geometric distribution in that the sample space could be infinite, but it's a bit more complex. <laughs> So this is going to be a little bit hairy because I'm going to calculate, and let me do this in black. I'm going to calculate the probability x equals 6. Okay, I guess I'll do it in red. And when I calculate this probability, I'm calculating the probability of 10 events. All of these 10 events are written out um, on the previous page. So maybe instead of doing the the 10 events, because that, that can be a little bit hairy, let's do just the four event outcome. 
Okay, so that is going to be x equals 5. Okay. Okay. So this is going to be the probability of tails, heads, 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 because we want four heads, or is going to be heads, tails, heads, <clears throat> heads, heads, or is going to be heads, heads, tails, heads, heads, or there's one more outcome, which is going to be heads, 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 tails, heads. And with these ors, we can add them, so long as they're disjoint. They're disjoint, okay, because it's not possible for the first outcome to be tails and heads. It's not possible for the first outcome and this outcome to be heads, or this one. Every one of these has a tails in a different position and a heads in a different position. It's not possible for both of those events to occur at the same time. So each of these events are disjoint because of the placement of the tails. Okay. So we're going to have probability of tails times probability of, excuse me, I'm getting ahead of myself. Probability of tails, then heads, 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 plus probability of heads, tails, heads, heads. Uh, then another head, plus probability of heads, heads, tails, heads, heads, plus probability of heads, 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 tails, heads. And I am so glad that I chose to do x equals 5 and not x equals 6 here. Okay. So now... Because it's safe to assume that one toss of the coin does not affect the other toss of the coin, and all the tosses of the coin are identical coins, I, that is identif identical probabilities, I'm going to use the independence property here. And for any one of these probabilities, I can do probability of tails, times probability of heads, times probability of heads, times probability of heads, times probability of heads. For my next one, I'll add that. I'll have probability of heads, times probability of tails, times probability of heads, times probability of heads, times probability of heads, and that should be an H there, okay? Plus probability of heads times probability of heads times probability of tails times probability of tails, uh, excuse me, heads times probability of heads. Plus probability of heads times probability of heads times probability of heads times probability of tails times probability of heads. So we can see here that the number of ways that the outcome occurs shows up because these are all the same identical probabilities. This is going to be four times probability of heads to the fourth times 
probability of tails. Okay. And if I let P equal to the probability of heads, I'll call that probability of success, then I can rewrite this in a specific way. Okay. This is going to be 4 times P to the 4th times 1 minus P, which I'll call Q. Okay. And you might ask... Like, where did that 4 come from? Well, that 4 came from the number of ways x occurs. Okay. And I think if we go back to our list here, okay, we have the number of ways that x occurs. That x occurred that many ways, that many ways, and that many ways. But why was it 4, and why was it 1, and why was it 10? I wouldn't want to write down all the events associated with x equals 7, but maybe we can come up with a shortcut for computing it. Okay. So, for example, if I look at x equals 4, notice that the last outcome is always the head. So that means that I have three heads that need to be placed. Everyone but the last position has to be a head. I don't care in what order they occur because I'm not distinguishing a blue head from a black head or a red head they're all the same heads to me, okay? So one thing that I'd like to, to note is <clears throat> how many of them are there? Here, I have how many positions to place a head with the exception at the last place? Well, that's going to be five places because I can't place it in the last position. So it seems to me like here I have five positions, the order doesn't actually matter. I'm counting all of them here. And I have to place three heads. So if five choose three, that happens to be exactly 10. Let's see if it works here. Let's see if we can figure out the number of ways it works for x equals five. So here I have the last position has to be a head. So I have four positions and I need three. So I have four choose three, I need three of them to be placed with heads. That's exactly four. If I do the same thing here, the number of positions that I have to place this is going to be seven minus one, choose three. Okay, so that's the number of ways that I can, can choose this. And you might be asking, well, why exactly is this a combination and not a permutation? Well, one short answer is that if you were to compute the combination and compute the permutation, you'd see that the combination matches when you were to write it out. But another way of doing it is saying, I'm not distinguishing, a permutation would be distinguishing the heads, coloring the heads, each a different color. I don't care what color the heads are because they're indistinguishable objects. That's what makes it a combination, okay? So now let's go back to our probability here and let's write out what this probability is. So instead of having a four there, it seems like I can have an X minus one, okay? And I'm placing three of them, and three happens to be related to the number of successes. So that's going to be four minus one. R is equal to the number of required successes. 
which is number of heads. So I could, instead of having a four, I can have this r minus one times p, it's raised, that's the number of successes, has to have r successes times one minus p. In this case, one minus p is a little bit more general is going to actually be x minus r. So if I have x trials, I need r successes, and that means x minus r failures. And this is the negative binomial distribution. Or density. And let me just say a few words on this negative binomial density. Okay. <laughs> negative binomial. If we think about the density and what we used, we needed a fixed probability P Okay. We needed independent trials. That is, we needed independent tosses. Okay. And my random variable x is the number of trials until exactly our successes. Okay. And note, there is not a finite sample space. Okay. Here's going to be an example. A part, an electronic part, requires Five transistors. Okay. What are the odds the engineer must sample? And that is, this engineer has infinite transistors available to him must sample eight transistors to obtain five working and we're going to say the probability of working is going to be 0.9 okay so this is negative binomial because we have independence. It wasn't ex explicitly stated, but it's fair to assume that one transistor's outcome does not affect the other. In addition, um, the probability of working is assumed to be 90% by writing that for each transistor. Okay. And here, my random variable x is the number of transistors that need to be sampled. Okay, So if I'm going to compute probability x equals 5, 
excuse me, let me just double check that. X equals eight. So excuse me. X equals eight, because we need to sample eight transistors. Well, I'm going to use eight minus one, and then I'm going to have five minus one times point nine to the fifth. So I have five working, and then point one, that's the number of failures, I'm going to have three failures, but the order in which the failures, failures occur can be different. So now let's quickly compute that. Give me a second. I think, but don't quote me on this, my calculator is giving me 0.99. Okay. Okay. So those are going to be our odds. Okay. Um, let's talk about a few other things about the negative binomial. So in the negative binomial distribution, we're going to have its expected value, that is the expected number of trials is going to be R over P, uh, E of X equals R over P, okay, uh, then its variance of x is going to be r times q over p squared. And its moment generating function is not that hard to calculate. It does require a bit of calculus and knowing the geometric distribution rather well. Um, but I'll just give it to you. Its moment generating function is going to be p times e to the t raised to the rth power divided by 1 minus q e to the t raised to the rth power. Okay. And since that is written kind of awfully, I'll just rewrite it one more time. R. Okay. And here I'll just add that q is going to be 1 minus p. Okay. So that's it for the negative binomial. Um, You'll have some exercises. You might even be asked to derive that moment generating function or the expected value, the variance, things like that. Okay, well, thank you very much.